Uh, hey everyone, I just got back from the IMS Toronto uh, 2015. In this case, my voice is kind of gone a little bit because I've been up since 5.30 in the morning and it is now 10.30 at night. Um, I should be going to bed, but I decided to do the uh, video now because I'm already made up and it's still kind of decent. <laughs> Also, it gives me a chance to uh, test out night shooting uh, finally, so I can actually see how it, the lighting works. So to start off, my lips, uh, the glitter that's on here is definitely um, when I was placed on during the show. Uh, the base color, however, was um, Makeup Monster Lipstick. I was wearing this during the show, I was like, where'd you get this lipstick? And that, that is it. Uh, Makeup Monster has a huge collection of rainbow colors, like legitimately rainbow colors. But this shade is called Backlash and it's this beautiful teal, actually it's a light teal I would call it. There's enough blue there but it's definitely in the greener spectrum of things. But anyway, Jody, I think it's Jody, the owner of Lick Cosmetics, wanted to put a metallic shade over and I'm like, no, no, let's try this. And I actually own this one, it's Hawaii Five O, and it's giving this much more mermaid -y. It's It looks periwinkle in the can or jar, but it's giving it much more mermaid translucent color on the lips based on whatever colors underneath it. So I do really like the. Mm, Translucent, yeah, that's the formula. Translucent glitter of this. But, doo -doo -doo. anyways, I'm just grabbing something else here. They have a new uh, base. Now they have the Clearly Liquid, which is a sugar uh, type adhesive. It works really well for skin and all skin tones. But uh, they wanted to formulate something that was a little more flexible, so they end up creating, and they just launched this now as like Forever Glitter Base. Um, yeah, they had three different flavors and they had three different colors, which confused me at first. I was like, th did they apply this color? I was like, no, no, it applies clear and it dries down. It's kind of like a milky kind of color when you apply it, like there's no real color to it. But it does dry down to a clear and they have three flavors. This one's the orange, it had a mint almond? I think it was almond, not mint. Yeah, they have mint, almond, and this orange one. So what I actually do, this feels really nice on the lips, um, then again, having a lip, uh, glitter on the lips, you can, can feel the glitter no matter what you're going to do. But overall, it's actually uh, not too thick, and not too chunky, and it works really well. Uh, so I was happy with that, especially later on now in the day. But they also recently got these little mason ball type uh, spoolies. <laughs> I thought this was really cool. Uh, they, actually, it's kind of funny because the color is almost identical to the lit logo. <laughs> but they bought these for basically to apply glitter to lashes so that the customers can actually buy a pack of these to use. And I was going to buy them. <laughs> but uh, they actually were nice enough to give me three of them, but they also did something one better and they actually gifted me this base. Uh, so the lineup this year to get into IMATS was crazy long. It literally wrapped around the entire North Building uh, main floor. And by the time I... it was about an hour wait <laughs> for me. By the time I got to the beginning of the queue, there were still more people in line behind me to get in. So I don't know if they just sold more general submission tickets just because they had a little more floor space or they just in general sold more general submission <laughs> tickets. But that was a very long queue, and I got there at 9.15 in the morning, and by the time I got in it was like 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, 20. I didn't really look at the watch, I was more like, let's hit the floor and actually start uh, looking for stuff. <laughs> so the first thing I actually picked up at the show was uh, True Glue, which is a new company's start up in here in Canada, but they're basically selling eyelash glue that works well actually it's all vegan, all natural ingredients, there's no crazy chemicals in there. And personally I have issues with eyelashes in general because it doesn't matter if it's latex free or um, the sands latex free ones that they advertise, I have sensitive eyes and it's not like they burn or anything, it's just that they get slightly swollen and doesn't look bad <laughs> on me, but when I take my makeup off, I'm like, oh, 
my eyes, my lids, particularly the upper lid is a tiny bit puffy and that's, I don't think that's really a good thing to do to your own body too often, but I still like wearing my lashes so it's kind of, I'm, I was kind of excited and hopefully that this will true glue, and this is a tiny one, I didn't buy the large one, will hopefully um, both work and not, I will not have as bad of a reaction to it as other uh, lash glues. So with the True Glue, which by the way smells like rose water, it's kind of nice actually. <laughs> or rose water chamomile? I think that was what they were describing, the ingredients. Yeah, I can detect a little chamomile in there, it gives it a little earthy note. But they were also selling mink lashes, and there's two other booths there, and unfortunately I can't pronounce the other ones, like Equius or Equine, I, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't actually haven't bought a lash set from them yet. And the other one's Velour Lashes, which I do love, but I've... I have a lot of them actually, so there's no point in me buying more of the same ones. So I decided to get the um, their Femme Fatale lashes they were selling, which is in their mink one. This is in model life. So the shape is actually kind of wispy. And it's a lot lighter than I normally get. You got them from frame there. <laughs> Tongue tight. <laughs> But I like the fact it's a little bit wispy, but it's still full without being uh, dense. <laughs> so this is much more, I guess, daytime appropriate for me anyways, versus like uh, I'm wearing a uh, Laura Struck of Pose right now, which is definitely drama <laughs> in a good way. The first thing I picked up was Face Atelier uh, Paris, their Zero Minus, yeah, Zero Minus foundation. I've I still like it. It's um, bought this one just for uh, color correcting all my foundations because I usually just too pale for most foundations. Uh, next thing I picked up was I went direct to Eve Pearl because I they had beauty blenders and they had their beauty blenders there. Let's put it that way. So I wanted to pick up a few more and see if they had the same show uh, special as last year, which is uh, three dollars for one. So yes, they did. So I grabbed four of these guys, and they're actually selling two for five dollars. So I grabbed four for ten, which was a really good price. Now the next book that I went to, and I'm hoping I can even fit this into the frame. Let's see. Oh, it's so big. It actually literally fills up the frame itself. Ah! It is Violet Voss's Giant Bay. So I definitely took a page from Sugar Pill in terms of like promoting their brand. Because I know Sugar Pill does really giant banks for like the LA and LA, London, and the uh, New York IMATs. So I've seen halls where they have the big bags and <laughs> like, yes, I want a big bag. It's actually bigger than the IMATs bag and I didn't even bother picking up the IMATs bag this year because it's, I think it's the same pattern as before. But I was actually excited to have Violet Voss because they canceled coming last year to IMATS Toronto. But personally, I was just really looking forward to pick up this. I um, heard really good things about it and it works on both the eyes and lips and the rest of your body. So this is their professional secret weapon pigment. I also picked up, um, as part of the eyelash glue, or not eyelash, glitter glue, uh, but lip and eye glitter glue. A, th a set with that and three of their lashes. So I got Taylor. I'm not sure you can see that in the color. I'm trying to watch on the screen and not flash you. I'm getting there. But Taylor is this really cool, like green and dark brown duochrome kind of glitter. So you're probably not going to see it on the screen there, but well. I also picked up Sam, which is this very dusty kind of gold. It's just very pretty. It's also very small uh, glitter uh, particle size. And I also got Rosaline. Rosaline? Lined? <laughs> Rosaline, anyways. Which is this uh, beautiful rose gold. I should get, the, get it on the screen again. It definitely reads pink on the screen, but it, it has that uh, dark, coppery tone to it. The Vera Monda color switch. Let's get around the corner. And three booths had this, so I went to all three of them. Um, Friends, yeah, Friends Beauty had it. Uh, Blur, which is our kind of like our friends in the Toronto area, and um, Nigel's. And Nigel's just had the better price for it. 
I was going for $24. Uh, uh, this is a duo one, by the way, so duo one was more expensive because of this little thing here. And if you just wanted to clean your brushes, you don't need this, but I, I kind of want to try it out. <laughs> Uh, one other place I wanted to check out, because last year I've seen a few photographs or haul videos where they're showing these kind of funky looking lashes, and they're from CC Brush Company. Now this year they had more lashes, but they didn't have those crazy styles, <laughs> which just made me disappointed. But I was looking around, I saw two things I thought I'd I mention, actually. Give me a second to grab this. <laughs> and the first one is they had the brushing. Now you're going <laughs> to... This is funny. Uh, I definitely bought this off of eBay, which is two bucks. That's how much this thing really costs. But the brush egg has been kind of popping up on Instagram and stuff. And I was like, oh, I gotta try it out. And it's just basically a scrub pad for your makeup brushes to clean them. And it just works because that's all it does. It's just like a little washer board. So they did have those there and it was kind of being displayed. I was like, ah, oh, there's the brush egg. I think a few other brands were supposed to bring it, but that was the only place I saw it. But they had something else that I got excited for instantly, and I was like, is this for sale? Because I'm like, yes, I've been wanting one of these for a while. No, this is definitely a knockoff for sure. But if you see this, it is a brush tree. Now, it's not as deep as the Benjabel one, which is the original creation of these, and this is definitely not as... well, it's acrylic sheets <laughs> which means it's it's yeah it's cheaply made like the materials are not that expensive although I do like the um, you can see it kind of like the silicone mat that they put through the sandwich actually yeah they literally sandwich a silicone mat between two layers and it doesn't have like the tri piece to kind of like because normally there's another slit there for the uh, the bottom to go through but it works. <laughs> and I got really excited and this woman's or other lady next to me was looking at it's like, wait, is that a brush tree? I'm like, yes. She's like, I want one too. <laughs> uh, the price for this was $18, which again, it's not crazy expensive, the materials they made out of this. So in the random slew of tools I seem to be collecting, uh, yeah, the makeup eraser was there. You can see my lights in this thing. So they only had the two color choices there for sale. They didn't have anything else, but I was like, I want to try it. And it's not so much that I know you can buy microfiber cloths, but the one thing I'm most hoping for, and one thing I definitely feel in this one is it's so much softer. Um, yeah, it really is soft. <laughs> so from what I can tell, they got this really super like baby soft cloth side. I actually could probably use a baby cloth. And they have this slightly shorter fingered one. Um, I guess this is technically the rougher side of it, but it's it's soft regardless which side you have it on. But because uh, OCC is no longer coming to IMS Toronto, uh, Blurry is taken, uh, well, not upon themselves, but they are a distributor for. Um, OCC products. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, in this case, for the trade show, they brought their lip products only, so none of the cream concentrate, although they did have the uh, balm, like the black and white balm there. So they had a huge section of just these little tiny carper cartons that had each color of a rainbow of OCC lip products. No, I have most of them. <laughs> And just tempted to get a couple more, but I grabbed the two that I was really hoping that they would have this year. And one was um, Hollywood. They didn't have it last year, and this year they didn't have the tube, but they had it in this. Um, co actually, these um, gloss container ones. They were saying that are actually more concentrated formula. What? Anyways, cut to random. My camera just crapped out slightly. Sorry. But anyways, the uh, Pure Hollywood is... Oh, <laughs> I'm actually going to swatch this one because I don't have to worry about, you know, taking photographs and make sure it gets pretty. Because I do have a blog. But the uh, these concentrated, or the gloss, I don't know what the heck they call these. 
ready to wear, thank you, the ready to wear tubes are actually more pigmented. Like this pure Hollywood is actually showing up quite nicely <laughs> on my skin. But they're saying the formula is just a little more concentrated. This is part of the reason why they work better in the tube because they are actually will apply more evenly and less feathering issues. So if you don't like how feathery or like how liquidy like OCC lip tars are, you're gonna love the kind of like the condensed version of it. Actually, I'm gonna melt, uh, not melt, blend this out. Cause it's actually almost like a liquid lipstick at that point, but what I really liked about this one was because it's kind of a gold nudie color. And yes, I've got swatches on my back hand, they're still staining. But the second thing I was really hoping that would come out is cosplay, and not cosplay as in the hobby. I know I'm a cosplayer, so what is it, a hobby, a lifestyle, life choice, <laughs> something like that. But um, as a cosplayer, I was like, I need I need something that's called cosplay. Same way I needed kind of like OCC's anime, because it's like, and Yahweh, and everything else that's in, you know, those types of terms from the genres. <laughs> So I was like, ah, oh, I hope they have it, and they did, and it's a beautiful green, and it's... Actually, I will swatch this one as well. But yes, it only came in the um, two form, which is fine. <laughs> will I ever use this much up? No. I like green, but green's not a daytime appropriate color, especially in an office. Could you imagine wearing this in an office? <laughs> but it's kind of like this... I don't know... It's got a little bit more, but actually blending it out slightly, it will be more opaque than that, but it's got a tiny, tiny bit of blue in there, so it makes it a little more, less leaf green, more foresty green color. I, um, they also brought the full, uh, line of OC, actually, what are these called anyways? Just color pencils. Basically, you can use these for uh, lips, eyes, whatever you want. They're kind of like, use it at your own discretion kind of formula. But in this case, I picked up the last year... Did I review that? I can't even remember if I reviewed it. I hope I did. <laughs> I think I did. Anyways, the OCC... Uh, this is actually the full size, and they came out with a kit of like five or five or six? Oh, I can't remember now. But there was six or five of the shades in full size in a kit together and I was really happy to grab it when it was on clearance for 20 bucks so that was a really good deal but I really liked the formula on them so I decided to pick up a few more um shades that didn't include was Lydia yeah I'll swatch this one as well I'm just looking at for the right side oh it is did this way yes <laughs> which is kind of like this berry plum because I do have the um, Dahlia version, which is not quite as purple, it's more of a purpley red. And Sebastian I had to pick up because it's grayish, grayish beige, browny color color. And the f actually the first thing I noticed is when you're starting to use these, they've got a bit of a film, so the first few strokes don't apply that smoothly, but once you get past that uh, first pressing. They actually look really nice. So yeah, it's a grayed beige. These pencils were $14 each Canadian. Again, our, our dollar is much higher or much worth less. Ugh, we're not worthless, but we're worth less than the US currency. It's at like 73%, which is not great when you're trying to order things to Canada now, but uh, that's a bit of a hike, um, personally, for a lip liner, so that's the reason why I only picked up the two. Uh, the individual OCC lip tars are 14 now. Now, again, that's price has been slowly increasing, so it's not shocking. You get a lot of product in there, especially when you consider that when Sephora was selling it online, uh, I think it was like 22 for a lip tar. <laughs> so I was very happy to buy it at the show. And these uh, ready-to-wear version was being sold for $15 Canadian, so $1 more for the packaging, but... Well, the last booth I went to uh, for the day was Royal Line and Call, and I usually always check them out. Um, this year I was really crossing my fingers that my favorite brush came in, and yes, it did. Um, although it wasn't the Green Line formula, the, for some reason it didn't have these last year, and it's the Silk uh, Synthetic Medium 
shader. That's what they're called anyways, but it's identical to the green line medium eyeshadow they were selling. In terms of like the bristle type is identical. It is legitimately identical. Um, another thing I picked up, because uh, this is another thing I got in the uh, silk green line set I bought a few years ago, is this uh, brush comb now. It's still working, but the last time I wa uh, was cleaning it, I pulled a little hard and one of the tongs popped out, which freaked me out. I was able to fix it back in, but it made me think it's about time to grab a new one just in case it dies this year. So I picked up the um, Revolution version of it, which honestly, yeah, it's a pretty much identical. It's just the uh, handle is slightly different. Actually, it is legitimately identical. <laughs> it's got the spoolie and everything, and this is only like $5. But when I was also there, I was looking for um, smudger brushes. I was looking for something that's a little more precise than I have. I have a lot of like, I don't know, I have a lot of brushes and most of them are just a little too big sometimes for my hooded eyes. So yeah, it looks fine there, but like there's, you know, I got a need precision. <laughs> I need precision sometimes for my eye makeup looks. So I was looking for a synthetic uh, tiny smudger pencil brush. And they don't really make small ones. And when I asked uh, Sales Kirk, I was like, oh, you have this one in um, natural hair. I'm like, do you have one in synthetic? He said he didn't. But as I was walking out to check out, I was, yes, I guess he did. <laughs> so it's a, these were actually this little guy. So I picked two of them up, or two dollars each, and I thought, it's synthetic, it's tiny, it'll get root. Right to do my eye sockets, which is what I really want, and not so much for a crease, but rather more precise cut. So lastly, when I was at the Lant Royal in Lang Nickel, let's, let's get it out there. I have problems speak, speaking right now. Anyways, uh, I was looking for the a certain specific uh, brush, and apparently it's very popular. Um, it sold out really quickly at the show, without very much of a prompt for anyone, and uh, Kevin James Bennett, who's usually always at the uh, IMS shows, this was kind of his brainchild too, this uh, series, which is the Royal Lanical Revolution line. So I wanted this small powder brush. It's like powder foundation. I, I have a weird way of describing it, but it's a 45 brush. Again, sold out, but not completely out of reach. Um, every year um, they usually do a good discount, and the Revolution series, when it first came out, I bought it in, uh, right away, <laughs> actually. Not that I needed the pearl brushes, but it was such a good texture to them, I wanted to try them out, and I'm ha very happy with the brushes I do have. Um, most of those brush sets were going for half price at $80. This year, I don't know how, uh, all the large brush sets from Royal Lankle for the Revolution line were $50. So, because my favorite brush is part of that set, I decided to pick it up. And it is this little, hopefully it doesn't shine too much. Ah, there we go. It's this little powder brush. But, um, it's kind of neat that I actually have the rest of the uh, face brushes, the larger ones. I bought the angle one last year. Ugh, get the frame here. So it does have the angle kabuki one again, which I don't mind. Same, uh, it's my favorite brush for sculpting my face, regardless of who makes it. So having more of them is always good. Uh, it comes with the uh, ang chiseled contour brush, if you will. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, again, I was going to buy one from Morphe. We're not talking about Morphe right now. <laughs> uh, they have the flat top kabuki, the large foundation brush, and a massive, massive kabuki brush. So this is a very good deal. Like, six large face brushes for less than $10 each when you break them down. It's a very good deal. Actually, I'll take a moment to talk about more since I brought it up. It was a madhouse again. What is wrong with people? What is wrong with people? The lineup was there all day. All day. There's a double queue to get into the queue to actually look at the products and buy them. I don't know if anyone moved. Like, they probably did. It just seemed like that line was ridiculously long. And even the staff at IMS were complaining that they were kind of 
dealing with Kyle control issues with them. They pushed them off to the side. You could still get around them, but it was just like, dang, girl, what's up with you? <laughs> like, um, I don't know how to describe it. They have like sort of a cattle pen around their booth that people were allowed into to actually look at the product. So it worked better in the sense that once you got into that area, you can actually take your time and not have to fight to get to the product. But at the same time, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm seriously thinking they need to think of a different way of uh, systeming people through. Like, have them have a basket and then get in line to pay maybe might be faster, just a little bit. <laughs> then again, you'll just end up with double lines, but at least it doesn't look as bad. <laughs> um, again, I left the show at 4 p.m. and there's still a queue to get into the queue to look at the products. I'm like, are these people ever gonna buy anything from them? Um, it looked like they had all the products anyways. Uh, yeah, again, couldn't even, didn't even want to bother to get into that line because it probably took up about two to three hour wait to get in to look at the products. That's a long time to spend to just look at, you know, brushes. So another booth of interest was of course Mac Pro and, but again, I wasn't expecting to buy anything there, uh, just because they have only pro products except for when it comes to like the lips, pro lip products and the eyeshadows. They bring in the full line. That said, <laughs> I was actually surprised to see this because I don't think it's a pro uh, only product, but they do have the uh, Studio Water Weight Foundation there. I bought this in advance though, so I wasn't expecting to find this a show because they're usually very restrictive in terms of what they bring. They have MAC Face and Body there, which is a pro product. They have the cream uh, full coverage foundations. I might have should have grabbed some of those, uh, but the product price point, and that's the reason why I'm not lamenting over get buying this first. It was only 20% off. If you bought a pro card, like you had to buy the pro card, you would get 40% off in at the show. Jordana, yes. <laughs> so loose shimmers. That is the product name. Anyways, they don't have a name name. Lovely made in Canada. Um, they were pretty. <laughs> and I don't mean that as like, you know, there's nothing really unique about them. They're just pretty. They uh, work so well and they were only $10 each. So you get a good jar of pigment. Now they had some more like shimmer, like shimmer shimmer, loose eyeshadow type shimmer. So they were really, really nice, but they had these two iridescent ones, so I wanted to pick up the second one, which is this blue iridescent. It was perfection, and they were sold out completely, apparently, or she just couldn't find it in the massive queue of products behind, underneath the counter. But I am happy that got, I had this one, because this is one that actually really caught my eye last year, and it's this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, very pigmented, as you can see that. And yes, I'm giving you a finger. Look, it's green. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's pure loose shimmer. But one thing I really, really was um, excited about is actually how dewy it was. Like, it's loose shimmer, but it's not glittery, you know, pearly kind of pigment. It's, it's really, I'm not even sure you can get this. It's very subtle and it's very um, flattering because it just gives you a nice bit of glow to the skin. Now the blue iridescent one was much more strong. This one is actually definitely a highlight material if you're pale because it gives your skin like the iridescence or luminosity to it without being like sh uh, pearly or shimmery or frosty of any sort. It actually blends in really, really subtly if you want to or you can build it up. So I'm looking forward to playing with this because it's like, yes. <laughs> At least that's my speed in terms of like uh, highlighters. I love shimmery highlighters. But I don't love it every day. It's too much. I don't want to look like a Twilight Vampire, which is what sometimes happens when you're pale and you've got shimmer like on fleek. So the other thing I picked up from Jordana was um, something I was hoping they would have in stock again. And it is the S Sculpt Gel. Now last year, um, Jordana was only discounting their own product line. Which is fine, like they were trying to promote their products, but uh, this year they I noticed um, they had Fair Degree there. And I also noticed there was a product the price difference. It was actually 21 at the show, whereas last year I bought it for 27 
and yeah, I didn't end up breaking into it for a number of reasons this year, last year, <laughs> this year. <laughs> but um, so I asked, I was like, oh, do you have the sculpt one, like the one from the UK? And the girl went to look for it, and yeah, they had it, and she freaked out because it was only twenty dollars. I don't know how this one is actually cheaper than this one because technically this one would actually cost more, like to ship in. And she was, <laughs> funny enough, she was complaining because she just like, I just bought this a week ago and it was like 42. I'm like, and I asked her, it's like, the, the price is like, it's on there, it's at the price. So I'm like, I will grab it. So lastly from Jordana, I picked up and I knew that Jordana was a retailer for uh, cosmetic uh, contacts. Like these are the ones that are approved through the FDA and that stuff. They're expensive. When you buy those types of contacts, they're expensive for a number of reasons. What I wasn't expecting and what my friend was freaking out on me personally for not picking up any for her was that they were selling them these $60 contacts for $10 a pair. You heard me right. $10 contacts. Now this one I'm holding here right here is the uh, ultraviolet blue and this is very very pale blue. It actually probably looks very very white under black light which is kind of cool and creepy at the same time. But I got it because Battle of Brushes, one of the models, was wearing this particular pair because Jordan, Jordan, sorry, camera cut out again. But anyways, Jordan uh, Cosmetics was the supplier for um, a lot of the prosthetics. I'm not, I think for sure it's prosthetics, but they supply the makeup and stuff for the uh, contestants to use. So yeah, this contact was on one of the models. It was perfectly creepy. I had to grab it after the show. <laughs> was over. Another pair I picked up was this green, it's just called green contact, but it's kind of like this blue based green. Uh, the lighting's not going to be cooperating, but it's so vivid. I've never seen a color this color before, like in contact use, especially within the cosplay community. So I figured these would pop really strongly on camera or in film. Uh, most greens tend to run a little yellow, so this is pretty intense. I was like, it looked actually almost teal in the show, probably because of the show lighting, but I was like, I need that, I need that color. <laughs> uh, next one I also picked up uh, was the werewolf yellow. So it's got, it's a very, very, very bright yellow. I don't even know if I can see it in the camera there. Sorry. Eee, there we go. There it is. Anyways, it's a bright yellow with a dark black, um, kind of Mobius, of Morbius? Is it Mobius or Morbius? effect to the edge so it's got a little more of organic texture to it even though it's only a, a duotone uh, color. And the last one which looked so stunning in the show light again I was looking kind of peachy rather than orange and it's although it's orange it still has a little more red to it so it's not quite a vibrant red it's more of a softer orange color and these are the Lestat like vampire of Lestat. <laughs> Context and I just thought that was really cool because it's a blend from yellows that slightly more peachy, pe peachy pink, orange to black. So I picked up four of those. And last but not least, uh, the very last booth I went to, but I went to bef like two hours before to put it in my order was for Makeup Forever. There was two yellows, those are these kind of beigey yellows I was looking at, but the uh, G. Uh, 416 so 416 was the uh, diamond shadow and it's very pretty um, yeah it was between this and like the yellow crystal one and I don't know I kind of like it but this one was the one that was there because it's very very luminous and the same thing again I picked up another diamond shadow because it's very very shimmery but this one was there were three I was debating uh, between. I decided to pick up this one as this D five hundred four, which is the. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting settled in. But it's like a beigey nude, but it's shimmer. Um, I think this would just look perfect for like a nude look where you want a little something else going on in your eyes without it being obviously uh, bold color. And then I decided to pick two pops of color. Um, I can't, I kind of feel guilty buying these because there are other brands that are, had similar shades, but it's Makeup Forever and I do appreciate the thought they put into their eyeshadows, especially the new formula. 
So I think this one's called Lagoon Blue because it was at the Sephora um, in store and online, but it's uh, D236. And yeah, it's another one of those diamond shadows and it does, it needs a little help. I definitely will admit that this one needs a little help. You need a sticky base to get that full range of colors, but it is gorgeous when you get it right. <laughs> And this one, I think it's just called Elmore Green, I think. It is metallic though, so the metallics are very, very buttery. Uh, definitely, I have a few of them now. But it's ME304, so. But the other thing I wanted to get was some peach lip liners because a peach in general is just hard to find in any brand. <laughs> so I picked up three, so yes. These were 13, I think they were 1340 as well. They're probably the same price as the eyeshadows, that's probably why. So I picked up three shades, and they're still in the shrinky wrap, so <laughs> we'll pop them out. You actually get a sense of the colors there. Yeah, peach. Uh, but anyways, I picked up the pale one, which is 2-3-C, 2-4-C, which is this, yeah, yeah definitely more darker peach, and there's... Da -da -da. It's 18C, which is like a more pinky peach. So yeah, got my peach highlight, uh, lip liner, sorry. New HD foundation, love it. It's so natural on the skin. I very, very much like it. I did buy, actually in advance, uh, thinking this would match me. And it's the uh, Y25 from Sephora. It's the right tonal range. Like, it's definitely darker on my skin tone right now, but uh, then again, I'm matching my neck, so I do have a tan. This actually does pale out on me. This one runs really peachy, like peach, peachy. It's... <laughs> it's my pet peeve with most uh, foundations that they, uh, whenever they run war, they seem to run like pastel, which is mm, not good for a pale girl, no. Workable, yes. Not perfect, but... One thing I did grab when I bought this was actually got the little sample size of the Makeup Forever one. And it was in, I have to read it, 225, which is 117. It's an olive toned foundation that is pale. That's actually almost unheard of in most foundation brands out there that is actually olive toned for a pale person. So I went ahead and actually bought at the show. Rah! that shade as well. So I have a full size of it. It's too dark for me, definitely. Way too dark. But that's another reason why I bought the Face Atelier White, which I'm trying to look for down here. I'm really hoping that this one will pay really well with this, as well as uh, the Makeup Forever, no not Makeup Forever, Too Faced um, Born This Way foundation as well. So that's another reason why I got these two and this one in particular. Just a quick little update. I um, forgot last night to mention this, but I picked up this lovely, and I'm sorry for the cheeky cameras I'm holding this up, um, Mac Pro, and it's not Mac as in M-A-C, it was M-A-Q Pro palette, and it's this, uh, I guess it's a pale one. It doesn't really say it's a, it does have a name. Anyways, but I picked up the lightest one. This is more of a color correcting concealer. But um, these foundation or cream colors work beautifully as foundation as well. They're highly pigmented, so even though it's like almost a business card size palette, it does last a very long time. And this is kind of like a sampler of their bigger palettes and individual colors. So I thought that was a really good price, even though it's like you're thinking that's not a lot of product for 25 bucks, but uh, it's really good for them. And I also picked up this tiny, tiny $2 Cinema Secret Puff. And they both came from a booth called Must Cosmetics, or M-U-S-S-T. So that is it. That is the entirety of my iMats haul. Again, it's a long one. I bought a lot of stuff, and I'm not talking as coherently as I would hope to after being wait for 15 hours.